Hey guys, no matter the adventure, we're in the right layers will help keep you comfortable and protected from the elements. That's right, staying warm and dry on adventures is what we're all about. So we're going to show you how to layer. What each layer does, when to use each layer, and which materials are right for you and your adventure. So let's get into it. First off, it's important to know that each layer has a function and plays an important role in keeping you warm and dry. That's right. First up, you have your base layer. So this sits nice and close to your skin. It regulates your body temperature and also pulls moisture away. So it's going to help you with not feeling too clammy or warm. So this is my thermals and long johns then? That's the one. Um, so next up, you've got your mid layer. Um, so your mid layer is great for changeable conditions. Um, it also helps keep you warm when you get a little bit cool. Um, and it's great to have between your base layer and your outer. Finally, you have your outer layer. So it's less of an insulator and more about protecting you from the elements at this point. Um, so it's really good at keeping any wind, rain, snow, anything like that, um, and it's gonna keep you nice and protected. All right, so essentially, once we know our layering system, we can just mix and match to suit the adventure. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if you're heading out and it's gonna be cold, lots of showers, you might wanna have all your layers on, uh, but if you're going out and it's a little bit warm, you might want to just wear your base layer and your outer just to make sure that you're safe from any occasional showers. Especially when you get into those high altitudes, especially in New Zealand where we've got lots of mountains. Let's dive into these layers, take a look at each different material and see what each one can do for you. So first up we've got the base layers. This is the layer that sits closest to your skin. Most Kiwis call them thermals. Yep, and I can distinctly remember my mum putting me in stripy long johns. Yep, so you've still got stripes around. Um, you do also have some plain colours, although if you really want to make a statement out on the trails, we've got some bright ones for you too. What do these base layers actually do for you? So the base layer will pull moisture away from your skin and it'll help you feel warm and dry. Last thing you want to be is cold and wet, especially when the temperature drops. Um, so if it's colder, you really want it to be nice and snug, fitting, like getting a nice warm hug. Um, however, if it is a little bit warmer, you do want to make sure you've got a little bit of freedom to let some air circulate around your body to help keep you a little bit cooler. Sounds ideal. So what are base layers usually made of? So base layers can typically be made from two different materials. So it can usually be synthetic fibres or merino wool. Um, choosing which is best really depends on where your adventure is taking you. And synthetic is a good option for people who are allergic to natural fibres, such as merino. Yeah, definitely. Synthetics are really warm and they do help to try and pull moisture away from your skin. They're not as breathable as Merino, although they are super hard wearing, easy to care for, and great for your overnighters or your day trips. That sounds great. And what are the benefits of Merino then? So Merino is an amazing all natural fiber. It really helps to regulate your body temperature. So it'll try and warm you up when you're getting a little bit cold and it'll try and cool you down when you're getting a bit too warm. It's also great because it has an anti-odor property to it, which means it's great for multi-day adventures where you might not be able to wash it as frequently. And taking a look at the Torpedo 7 range, what synthetic options would you recommend me? Yep, so for the synthetics, we've got our Torpedo 7 Nano Core range. So this is lightweight, warm, and great for everyday adventures. Sounds great, and what about Merino options? So for Merino, we've got our Torpedo 7 Summit range. It's 100% Merino wool. It's gonna keep you warm and dry when it's really cold and it's gonna keep you cool and dry when it's getting a little bit warmer out there. Well, I think we've got base layers pretty covered, but can you help me out with the mid layer? Yeah, so mid layers are all about choosing a highly efficient material that's gonna keep you warm. Options such as wool or fleece are great because they offer awesome warmth to weight ratios and they're really just gonna keep you warm. They look pretty comfy as well. Does this layer also move moisture away from the body? Yep, so they're lightweight, breathable, and moisture wicking, so they're gonna keep you nice and warm and dry. Does that mean it could also be a down layer? If you're heading to really cold climates, then you'd wanna throw a down layer in there just to trap that extra little bit of body heat. Well, I guess that just leaves outer layers, and um, could you please tell me a bit about them? Of course, so outer layers are normally durable, waterproof, and or windproof materials. Okay, and if I'm looking to buy one, what should I keep an eye out for? Um, so they're normally split into two categories. So first up, you've got your waterproof jackets, which are usually non-insulated and have waterproof and breathability ratings. So they're highly technical fabrics, which means that they're breathable, allowing moisture to escape while still remaining waterproof on the external shell. Okay, so how does the breathing ability and, and the waterproof ratings work? So it's pretty simple. The higher the ratings, the better they are. They're gonna be more waterproof and more breathable. 
Uh, okay, well that's starting to make sense. What about soft shells? Yeah, so soft shells are normally not waterproof, although they are great for multi-purpose use. So great against the odd shower, bit of wind, uh, and they are also normally insulated to give you that little bit of warmth and keep you toasty. So now that I know all the different materials and how to layer them, how do I look after all this gear? Yeah, so let's start back with merino. So merino is a really delicate fabric. So you're going to want to make sure that you either wash it in the machine under 30 degrees inside out on a real gentle cycle. Alternatively, you can hand wash it. Uh, make sure with both options that using a mild detergent, something like Nick Wax wool wash is a great option. I also heard that you could dissolve washing powder into water before putting it in the machine and that stops sticking to the fibres, which also stops holes. Mm. But I think putting it in a laundry bag is even easier. Definitely. So when you're handling your wet merino and get to the point of drying it, you really want to lay a towel out flat on the surface, grab your merino, handle it carefully because when it is wet it gets quite heavy, lay it flat and it's also a great opportunity at this point to reshape your merino if you need to. Is there any other tips I should know? Yeah, so with merino, make sure you don't tumble dry it, use fabric softener, and definitely don't dry it in direct sunlight. The good thing about merino is it's naturally anti-stink, so you don't actually need to wash it after every use. That's easy. So that's merino covered, but what about all my down layers? Yep, so down, you definitely just want to use a down wash. Um, so make sure you follow the care instructions. It's really important to make sure you pay attention to that. Um, throwing it in a front load is best. And then once you get it out of the washing machine, squeeze out any of the excess water from your baffles and then make sure you throw it in the dryer with some tennis balls or some bundled up socks. Both are just gonna help to puff your jacket back up. So I can't just send it off to the dry cleaners then? Definitely that's a big no-no because if you send it off to the dry cleaners, they can use chemicals which can, which can really damage your down. So how often should I be washing my down gear? Yeah, so with down, you can limit washing. However, if you do notice it's visibly dirty, you can spot clean it. Otherwise, if you're wearing it a fair bit, once a year should be plenty. Okay, and is that the same for my outer layers as well? Yep, so with outer layers, it's very similar to down. There's a huge range of different fabrics and materials that they use. So just pay attention to the specific care instructions for your jacket. Yeah, you always want to pay attention to those instructions. And there's lots of products you can use as well. Yep, definitely. So we stock a huge range of cleaning and care products. Um, and they'll really help you get the best performance out of your layers. Well, that was some great garment advice. But remember to always read the care instructions because... If you care for your gear, your gear's going to care for you. Absolutely. This was our how to unlayering. I hope you learned some great tips. See you out there.